And so I want you to take your Bibles this evening and turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. We'll be in several scriptures tonight, but I want to start here and, and kind of build our foundation uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 3. i got several verses we're going to read here. I was going to read verse 3, and then as I got to go, and I thought, well, verse 4 ain't bad, and, and then next thing you know, we're down through verse 14. So we're going to start in verse 3 of Ephesians uh, chapter 1. Ephesians just happens to be my favorite book of the Bible, and I like them all, but that's my favorite. And so let's begin here in verse 3. He says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed uh, be the Lord and God of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself and according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, that he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of your inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. I don't know about you, but that right there is a sermon and a message in itself, and ought to be enough to make a good old Baptist want to say amen. It ought to make a Pentecostal want to raise their hands and shout hallelujah, and it might make a charismatic even want to run. Who knows? Because that's some good stuff right there. Matter of fact, I would encourage you to get up every morning and just read those first 14 verses and see if it don't make your grumpy day into an exciting day when you realize what you now have been put in and positioned in of being in Christ Jesus. How many of you have ever heard uh, this saying? Someone will ask, how are you doing? And this is what I, I say this sometimes. I've heard some of you say this time, say this at times. You will say, I am blessed and highly favored. I want you to know, whether you say that or not, if you're in this room today, or if you're listening online, and you are a believer, you are blessed and highly favored. That's, that, that's what you are today. And so maybe, maybe the, the devil has kind of put in your head some stuff and beat you down with some stuff, but I want you to understand tonight, as we just read those verses, the Bible says in Romans chapter uh, 10 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so when we just read those verses, if you would have allowed it to, it will now come inside of you and produce faith. And we know that faith is what pleases God and that's what he looks for in our life is us taking God at his word. And so when we say that we are blessed and highly favored, what we're saying is I understand who I am. I understand who I am. You know, a lot of people are looking for themselves. I'm trying to find myself. Well, if you're a believer, you need to know you've already been found. 
You've already been found. You've already been bought. You've already been delivered. You've already been redeemed. You've already been forgiven. You've already been already everything. You're there. So quit trying to figure out who you are. You are in Christ Jesus. And the Bible says you are complete in Him. So yes, we are blessed and we are highly favored. When I think of the word blessed and highly favored, I immediately think of the word grace. That's a word that we even saw in these verses we just read, that word grace, that, that undeserved favor of God. And that's what it is. It's undeserved. There's not a person in here that deserves grace. Not one. That might, that might hurt somebody's feelings in here. Maybe you came in here thinking a little more highly than you ought to think of yourself, and you thought, you know what, I kind of deserve. Well, you don't. We don't deserve grace. We can't earn grace. You can't work for grace. You just receive. You just receive grace. And that undeserved favor of God. Now, what I want you to understand for a minute is now that doesn't mean that you will not have struggles. If, 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 if you're watching someone on television and or listening to a podcast and somebody tells you, that you're not going to have struggles now that you're a believer. You need to turn the TV off, turn off the podcast, and get back into the Word and let the Word work in your life because you are going to have struggles. That's why one of Paul's writings, he said this, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. That doesn't make sense to me. Count it all joy. He didn't say count it all happiness. Right? There's a big difference between being happy and joy. Happy has to do with what's going on around me. Sometimes I am not happy, but I don't ever give up my joy. Joy comes from the inside. Joy has nothing to do from what's going on around me. I can turn on the news, I still have joy. I can listen to people fight and complain and do all kind of stuff. I'm going to still have joy. I can, I can get on Facebook, and I can somehow still have joy. I can get on any kind of social media, and I can have joy because I don't let joy get messed up with what's going on around here. But there are going to be some struggles, so I can count it all joy when the struggle comes. Yeah, count it all joy because now you're in good company because Jesus had struggles. The Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, good grief, follow his life sometime. I hadn't been shipwrecked, I hadn't been put in jail, and I hadn't been thrown rocks at yet. <laughs> the night is still young. But they had, they, 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 they under, Paul understood a secret. He understood where he was. And when you understand where you are, you know you're blessed and you're highly favored. The struggles don't get you down anymore. Matter of fact, here's what I like to say to people. I believe that struggles are tailor-made for us. Because they help show us our weaknesses that we need to work on. And that, that, that's just what I found in my life. I, I, I was one time, Michael, my son, and he was talking with Tina and I, and he was... He was going through a struggle, and it's a struggle that he's been on before, and he was just, just, oh, I don't understand. Why does this keep happening? I don't understand it. And his mama looked at him and said, well, maybe there's something that you're supposed to learn, and you keep going around the block because you hadn't learned it yet. Because our struggles are tailor-made for us to find out where we're weak and then when I get my weakness, I get into the Word and get strong. If I don't have struggles, I'm thinking I'm good. But I can tell you, struggles will reveal <laughs> the flaws. It will reveal the flaws. By the time I think, I've got this thing done, somehow, some way, there's a struggle. You ever hear somebody say, you're on my last nerve? Yeah, some people... God will allow someone, a situation, or something, find that nerve until we learn why 
it was given to me so I can count it all joy. Amen? So it's not always going to be a rosy garden. Not always, you're going to have struggles in this life. That's part of it. But that does not mean that you're not blessed and highly favored. Matter of fact, with being blessed and highly favored and being in the position in Christ, we get benefits. I may like benefits. I like benefits. With it, Psalms 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all my benefits. I promise you, you need to know what your benefits are. You know, you, when, you go, when you go get a job and they hire you and they give you that booklet, you want to go home and read it because you want to find out, well, what are my benefits? What am I going to get for working here? What, am I, what, what do I get out of this? Well, you need to open up the manual and you need to find out, what are my benefits? People say, well, that's the wrong attitude to have. If he told me not to forget them, I need to know what they are. So I need to go in there and get them. So I get into the Word of God, and I begin to find out what those benefits are. And, and there are benefits that, 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 that belong to God, and there are benefits who now belong to us. Because, see, he has all the benefits. And what he does is, and this is part of grace, and being blessed and highly favored, he says, I'm going to take all this stuff that I've got, and it's yours. And he's got so much of it that every believer around the world gets it, and it doesn't run out. His grace is immeasurable. The unsearchable riches of his grace. In other words, try to find the end of it. You think trying to find the pot of gold, the end of a rainbow is tough. Try to find the end of grace. So when we get saved, there's benefits. Yes, there, there, there are future benefits. I mean, there, you know, there's all kind of benefits. Sometimes we don't understand. You know, a lot of times we think, yeah, my benefits is one day and sweet bye-bye. When I get to heaven, when I get on the other side, I'm going to have all this, this, this. And that's great. That's wonderful because it is. And I'm not making light of it because it's an awesome thing to know that one day we're going to be with the Lord forever. Not just the way we are now. I'm talking about there with him. Now, the Bible says that we will forever be with the Lord. It didn't say we'd forever be in heaven because we're going to be wherever he is. So if he's here, we'll be here. If he's in heaven, we'll be in heaven. We'll be wherever he's at. And yes, that is, that is a benefit, amen? And that's good to know. It's one day, and that is in the sweet by and by, one day. But, but I love what the Scripture tells us in John 10, 10, that the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, but I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Not just the afterlife, but a life that's here and now abundantly. It's an abundant life. I shared this uh, at North Augusta this past uh, Sunday, and we were talking about the word abundantly here in John 10.10, 10, and the word literally means to have a superior life. How many of us are living a superior life? Woo! You know, the enemy, yeah, he's out to do his thing. He's out to steal. He's out to kill. He's out to destroy you. But the superior life that Christ gives us is the blessed and highly favored life. That's what that life is. That's what that life is. And, and, and so, uh, so you have to ask yourself, am I, am I living superior life? Uh, am I living the abundant life? I share with them uh, uh, some Greek words because there's, there's two Greek words to the word life. And one of the things I tell people is the English language is kind of a vague language, you know. It's just, I mean, it, it does the best that it can do, you know, up here. And in the South, it's probably even more vague than just regular English uh, that we have. But, you know, I tell people, you know, you know I, 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 I love steak. Anybody else love steak? Yeah, that's, that's my meal of choice. I love steak, but I also love my wife. Now, I just, you know, steak, my wife, I love, and in the English words, that's all I can say. I love my wife, and, and I love steak. It's kind of vague, but so we, we would have to go into another language to get a deeper meaning of the word love, and we find out there's a few of them. 
you know, and I found out that, you know, I do love steak, but it ain't like I love my wife. It's different. It's better. So the same way with the word life. We think of life, we think of life. <laughs> but the Greek says, no, there, there's, there's a couple of them. One is the word bios. It's where we get the word biology. And, and it refers to uh, the duration of life or the lifespan. You go to a cemetery and it says they were born this date, they died this date. It's the dash. What happened in the dash? That, that was your bios, you know. And, 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 and that's great because it's given to you by God, by the way. And it didn't happen when you were born. It happens when you were conceived. Let that sink in. But then there's another word. Zoe. And, and this word is the word we actually get our English word zoology from. But it refers to the life as God has it. The life that belongs to God that becomes ours when we embrace the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a different kind of life. It's an everlasting life. My bios is not everlasting. It has a beginning and it has an end. And, and if the Lord tarries, there'll be a stone that will have such and such date, such and such date. That's bios. But the other life is an eternal life. That's the life he wants us to have. That's living in what we would know as a blessed and favored life. The benefits, yes, are, are eternal because they're in heaven, but they're also today, right now, this week, whatever you're going through, whatever situation you're in, no matter what's happening, you have both of those lives happening in you right now. Right now. They're both going on. You know, and so we have this abundant life that he wants us to have. We have this abundant life that he wants us to be part of. And he wants us to, yes, have these things of the future. But man, how much do we miss out of today? Because I said, every believer in here is highly favored. Every believer in here is blessed. But then I ask you, are you walking in that? Because you can have it and not have it. You can have it, but you cannot have it. You know, that would be like somebody coming and saying, hey, I went and deposited a million dollars into your account. Come on. <laughs> Speak those things that be not as if they are. But I could die poor if I never go and access. He's given us every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And you'll say, well, I don't feel like I'm getting every spot. Well, what's wrong? Where, where did you crimp the hose? I, I was, I was uh, pressure washing one day, and I had taken the pressure washer all the way around the other side of the house, and I was doing the back side of the house, and it just quit throwing out water. And I started kicking the pressure washer, because that's what men do. And I'm kicking the pressure washer, wondering what's wrong with the pump, you know, those things not working. And, uh, you know, and, and then I get a little heated and hollered, and then I had to stop and make sure I don't get in the flesh. But I'm kicking this thing and going, this thing's messed up. Something's wrong with this pressure washer. I don't know what's wrong. i got to get this stuff done. And I'm frustrated. And I walked around the house and realized that everything was fine. The water was flowing, but I had gotten close to the brick on the corner, and I had stopped the flow of the water going to the pump. It wasn't the pressure washer's fault. It wasn't the water's fault. It wasn't the hose's fault. It was me getting it too close to something and crimping it off. And so if we're not living the blessed, highly favored life, why? Where have we crimped off the line? We got we to go find that. And so, and so when we're born again, yes, we're given bios life, but when, but when we're born, but when we're born again, we're given zoe life. So you get one when you're born, the other one happens 
when you're born again. And you get that, and it's the abundant life. And so I love when I start going through the scriptures and finding the benefits. I want to know. You know, don't you want to know how many weeks vacation you get on your job? You want to know if you got medical? You want to know what you want to know all those things? Well, I want to know what, what I've got so I can access what's been given. If I don't know, I won't access it. I won't. And so, you know, that's something we have to know. You know, I think about all through scriptures. I mean, even, even when you go back to Genesis, all the way to the, you know, to, to chapter, uh, the first, chapter, uh, first couple of chapters, we get to see how God created the whole universe. And, you know, he, he made Adam and Eve. He looked at everything being said, it's good. He had a relationship with them like never before. I mean, it was awesome. They were blessed and highly favored, weren't they? Because God's always been a God that blesses and highly favors. They had it made in the garden, but they crimped the hose. It was called sin. God didn't do nothing wrong. God didn't change. But man did. See, God doesn't change about his blessings and being highly favored. We do things that crimp the hose. And he wants us to know what's going on so we don't live that way. And so he, all through the scriptures, I, I, lo I, listen, I, I love reading through the, the, the Old Testament and you see the things he did with the children of Israel and, and how he would bless them and then, and, then, and then it would, you know, it looked like they just weren't being blessed anymore. Did God do something? No, they did something. It wasn't that he didn't still want to bless. The blessing is there. We've got to find out what's causing it. Is it unbelief? Is it, is it, is it, is it a sin? Is it something? What, what is going on? And so our job is to find those things in our life so that we don't find ourselves not walking in being highly favored and blessed as he wants us to be. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And, and this is a, maybe a familiar scripture to you. Paul said this in in uh, chapter 13, verse 12 and 13, he says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, but now I know in part. But then I shall know just as I also am known. And now by faith, hope, and love, and these three, but the greatest of these is love. And so what we have here is what we see that we get to experience. We get some things up in it. We get, we get faith. We get hope, and we get love. I don't know about you, that's good benefits, isn't it? And the reason why I say they're benefits is because if I didn't have faith, hope, and love, I, I would be a pretty miserable guy. Think about that. Without faith, not only would I not please God, but I would just, you know, want to end it all if something didn't go like I wanted it to go because I had no faith. I had nothing to stand on. My hope, that's just, and that hope is not, well, I hope this works out. No, this is my assurance. That's what that word means. My blessed hope, my, my, my assurance that I have. And then love. I don't know about you, but, you know, not everybody's easy to love. Like, I'm easy to love. You know, some people are a little more of a work. But I have a benefit that says, you can love the unlovable, Stephen. Why? Because I've given you a benefit called agape i've given you that love so these are benefits wow i'm glad i got that because man i would have just messed up big time when i got to walmart but now i can love i can love now and i can walk behind the person who's walking one mile an hour i can do that now i can love them i can love them but if i don't know then i don't know you know and so we want to experience this but you know I love how you said at the beginning there that we, we, see, we see in a mirror now, but it's dimly. In other words, the reflection isn't quite maybe what it should be, but at least it's the reflection. You know what I'm saying? So at least you got a reflection. And yes, these benefits in heaven are great, but here and now he has faith, hope, and love for us. And so we need to walk in those. And, and, and then, you know, I think about, as we were saying, the children of Israel. Man, God just really just did some cool stuff with them. You know, we used, to re we used to hear about those stories when we was in Sunday school when I was a kid, and we did vacation Bible schools when I was a kid, and we would hear about all these stories. And, and to me, at times, I, I, maybe I just thought as a kid that they were just stories, but you know, they weren't just stories, they were true. 
God was showing forth himself of who he is. So today, when we read those things, because the Bible says those things are written aforetime, were written for our learning. See, I'm learning all about God and who he is and what he wants to do. That's why we had to be in the word. We had to allow that to be able to take place uh, in our lives so we don't miss out on what God wants us to do. And so when you think about those benefits, what, what, are, what are some of the other benefits? Now, some will say, well, uh, the benefit, is it, is, it just, is it just wealth? Well, no. Benefit is not just wealth, you know, because not everybody has offered me to put a million dollars in my account, you know. And, and so wealth is not so much the benefit as what Paul said, I know how to have and I know how not to have. Here's the benefit. But in all these things, I am content. Well, he didn't think about contentment being a doggone benefit. But yeah, contentment. Because life is going to throw some stuff, right? I mean, I might have a lot of money in the bank this week. But a month from now, I don't know. But it don't matter what state I'm in, I'm going to be content. Why? Because I know that I'm blessed and highly favored. I know what the Word says that He will do for me. Someone said, well, maybe, uh, maybe it's my health. Well, again, you know, Paul's writing and he has to have help because he can't see that well. He even said one time, I wrote this in my own handwriting, and it was, he said, I used large letters. <laughs> so he could read it. Because <laughs> it was, he, he, has, he had trouble seeing. And so, when you begin to understand that even if I have struggles, it doesn't mean that God don't want to heal you. Don't get me wrong here. You know, gosh, I've had healing after healing after healing. But sometimes I, I get sick. Sometimes we have stuff that happens. Now, what I pray is, is along with the benefits, one of the benefits, and we'll talk about him in a minute, is the Holy Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit does is he helps me to stay in positions, like, with my finances. I know that if I tithe, then there's certain things I can count on. But I also know I need some wisdom to know what to do with the 90, because the 90 still belongs to him. He just lets me have that. And so what am I going to do with the 90? Well, I better talk with God, because sometimes we get ourselves in a mess, and sometimes our struggles had nothing to do with the devil. Sometimes our struggles had nothing to do with God. It was my own stupidity because I liked something. And I thought, well, you know, I worked for this, so I'm going to buy this. And, and the Holy Spirit was like, well, why don't you ask me first? Well, it's my money. Okay, go ahead, buy it then. And then I buy it, and then I'm asking him two weeks later, Lord, I need you to help me out of this. And he's like, help you out of this? Who you think got you in that? We put ourselves in that. And so I want to I get the benefit of wisdom when I think about my health. Listen, God healed me of psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. I mean, I was, I mean, back a few years ago, 2018, bedridden, not able to walk. Uh, when I would come here on Wednesday night, I sat down through the whole worship service and just hurt, hurt, hurt. I hurt all the time. Every joint in my body hurt until at times when I would not even be able to get out of bed. God miraculously healed me. But then about six months later, I started hurting a little bit. Now, I immediately said, oh, no, uh -uh, devil, mm, we ain't having that. And it would go away. And then about a year later, it did the same thing. Then about a year later, it did the same thing. And I would get, but then one day, the Holy Spirit said, why don't you ask me how you can stay healed? All right, what do I need to do, Lord? You need to change some things. He said, now I healed you. But if you don't want psoriatic arthritis to come back in your body, you're going to have to do some stuff. You're going to have to get rid of some stuff. You're going to have to add some stuff. And so by finding out the benefit of the Holy Spirit 
wanting to give me correction, wanting to help me understand that if I wanted to stay without this stuff, I need to change some things. And so I had to change some things. And now I don't have any issues with psoriatic arthritis. Because why? Because I'm not doing the stupid stuff I was doing that was putting me back in with inflammation to do that again. But that was the Holy Spirit. But I had to listen. He gave us two ears, one mouth, so we could listen twice as much as we talk, right? But these are benefits that he gives us. I mean, you think about safety. Safety is a benefit, but sometimes Paul would be shipwrecked. Well, that don't sound like it's safe. Sometimes he'd be in jail. That don't sound like it's safe. Yeah, but he was content. He was okay because he knew that he was blessed and highly favored. It had nothing to do with the outside. He knew where he was and who he was. And that's what we have to understand. Now, when you talk about answered prayers, oh, absolutely, yes. That's the benefit of God that he answers prayer, right? Or sometimes he doesn't answer prayer. Listen, I am so glad that he doesn't answer all of my prayers with a yes. Because I'd probably be living somewhere in South Georgia with this girl that I told God if he would let me marry her, I'd go on a mission field, I'd do whatever you want me to do, just let me marry her. Well, she's been married five times now. I am so glad <laughs> that God didn't grant me a yes because I thought, well, I asked him, ask anything in my name. I hope that girl ain't watching. Sometimes God says yes. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says not yet. I sometimes would rather have a no <laughs> than wait. <laughs> well, that's where my faith comes in because the trying of my faith produces patience. Uh, you don't have to ask for patience. You don't. Just go get some faith. So wait a minute. Yeah, you got to have faith. That's how you please God. Then how do I wait for my promise? you got to learn to wait. So how do I get that? By getting faith. Because the faith that's not tested is the faith that's not trusted. Right? I want trusted faith. I don't want just to go around and tell everybody, I got faith. I'll be like, move a mountain. I got faith. And then when something happens, oh, my God. <laughs> no, I want faith that says, you know what, I'm going to try this. And then I do it, and it doesn't rock me like it used to rock me. Then I know, hey, that's faith that I can count on. And that's what, that's what we're talking about. So, yeah, he may sometimes say, wait, but it's okay. We have to get to that place in life to know that that's a benefit, that he knows what I need before I need it and when I need it and if I don't need it. And when we get to that place, we can take it as a benefit and not a, well, he said no. You know, that's what my kids would do when they would come. They, they finally got where they quit asking me. They would go ask Tina because I usually had the same answer. No. <laughs> no. They go, I told you. They would put Michael, Aaron and Ashton, Ashton's sitting over here. They would make Michael go ask. <laughs> so Michael would come in there and ask me, and i go, no. And then he'd go back. I told you not to go to daddy. I told you to go to mama. <laughs> but even in the, in the nose, we can be confident that he knew, he knows that it's not what I needed. He knows it's not what I needed right now. He knows I don't need it right now. That is a benefit that I need to hammer into and have as a part of my life. You know, um, there's only one constant in all the things, in all, in all the lives, all, there's, there's this constant, and, and that is the benefit of the Holy Spirit. I don't, I don't think the church fully understands what we have in the benefit of the Holy Spirit. I, I, I know that the denomination that I used to be a part of had no clue, but I, I think even in what we would call the charismatic world, 
and, and, that we sometimes don't really understand and the benefits of having the Holy Spirit. How do I know? Because I'm a pastor and I counsel people, I talk with people, and so we, sometimes we just don't, we think we know, but we don't know. That's why we got to get in the Word, you know. And, but, but the Holy Spirit, man, you think about all the things the Holy Spirit does in our life, you know, he, 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 it is Him who separates us from the world. It's Him who changes us from glory to glory. It's Him who works in and through us. You know, so He's a benefit for us, right? He's, we, we read all this in Ephesians. He, he's the one who seals us. He's our, even our guarantee. He's our earnest money. You go buy a house. We got some real estate people in the house. One of the first things you do when you want to sign a contract is you got to put down some earnest money. This is the guarantee that you're going to buy. Well, the Holy Spirit says, <clears throat> I'm the guarantee on his life. Really? I mean, that's like somebody walking up going, hey, they want $1,000 earnest money, and somebody says, I'll pay it. Yeah, really? Cool. So the, the, the earnest money on my, on my Zoe life, Holy Spirit says, <clears throat> I'm the earnest money. That's a pretty good deal, guys. That's a benefit. That's a benefit. And that's not just me. That's not just pastors that get that benefit. Everybody. I like that. Everybody. Everybody. All believers get that benefit. Day one or day 1,000. It's yours. You don't have to work so long and go, you know, you'll get this at six months. Now, you get, you get partial life uh, at, at, at six months, and then after you've been here five years, we'll talk about what he said in John 3, 16, of eternal life. <laughs> Ain't what he said. You get eternal life. You get Zoe, and he is the seal, and he is the earnest money that holds it. That's a benefit right there. If I, ooh, that's, I love that benefit. That's good. And so when we, we can need to learn that. He, he is all of that. And, and him at work in us, should, it will produce what we call outward manifestations. You want to know if you're using the benefit? There'll be outward manifestations. It's kind of like chocolate. You know, when it's at work in me, there's an outward manifestation. Yeah. My clothes start shrinking. It's the weirdest thing. People who are addicted to, to alcohol and drugs, when they get under the influence of that, what there's an there's a outward manifestation, isn't it? I mean, you meet the shyest person in the world. And next thing you know, they love everybody in the bar. I love you. I love you too. And it's like, this ain't the same guy. He was all quiet and everything. What happened? It's a manifestation took place. Manifestation. Well, with the Holy Spirit, there's going to be some manifestation. Ephesians 5a says, do not be drunk with wine, which is there in excess. You Don't be a drunkard, but be filled with the Spirit. Because when you're filled with the Spirit, there's going to be some manifestation. And it's called the fruit of the Spirit. Those are benefits. You know, we talked about one of them a while ago, love. It's a benefit. Joy. We talked about joy a while ago. These are benefits I get just because I have the Holy Spirit in me and I'm accessing the benefits. I am now putting forth a manifestation of my evidence that I have the Holy Spirit. I used to, and I, 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 and I want you to hear me this, and, and don't take me wrong when I say this. Uh, you know, we got baptism next Wednesday night, by the way. And uh, hopefully, if you're one of those candidates, you're here tonight, but you'll be here next week, and that'll be happening on the 19th. But one of the things I used to say back in my old world of where I came from, when I would baptize people, I would tell people that, 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 that the water baptism was the outward evidence of the inward experience. But I learned something as I studied. 
I know people have been baptized so many times the tadpoles know the social security number. And I look at their life, and I go, if that's the evidence, they in trouble. So baptism is not the outward evidence of an inward experience. The fruit of the Spirit is our outward evidence of our inward experience. You want to know if you're saved? What kind of fruit are you producing? Because the benefit will be love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faith and self-control. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a benefit we all need, right? Think about all those things. Those are benefits. Those are my outward manifestations that I have something on the, that I am filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And so what we have to do is we have to do homework sometimes. We have to get into the Word, and we have to go, all right, I need to get in here and find out what are my benefits. And so, you know, I, I, would, I would encourage each of you, listen, take this week, get you, down, get you some paper, and, and, or if you do notes on your phone or however you do your notes, and get into the Word of God and start writing down those benefits. Because if, if he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not, I need to know what they are. So start getting in there and finding out what your benefits are. Because we will find then that we might not have to go run down and, and ask the pastor to pray for us because we found out that I now know I already have it and now i just going to go get it. That's just a thought. I'll give you just a few to get you started. I'm winding down to close, but I, won't, I, won't, I want you to get these. Because you might go, I just don't really know how to, to find out this. Well, just get in the Word. You'll be shocked what the Holy Spirit will do for you. You know, He's your teacher and your guide. And as you study the Word, He can make it come alive for you. That's just another benefit. He also will use it to bring back when you're in a struggle and you are trying to think of something and you don't know what to do. The Holy Spirit can bring back what you know. Now, he can't bring back. I, I dealt with that when I was dealing with teenagers. And they'd come to me. I was a youth pastor, and they'd come to me on Thursday night, and they would go, hey, pastor, I need you to pray for me. they got a big test tomorrow. And i go, okay, how much have you studied? Well, I haven't studied. And i go, well, I really can't pray. <laughs> because my prayer would be, Lord, bring back to their remembrance what they've put in. Well, there ain't nothing in there. It's going to be a blank paper, and you're not going to do well. And so it's the same way, you know. Yeah, if, if I'm in the middle of a struggle, oh, what did that preacher say that verse was? Oh, he said something. Well, I can't depend on my pastor. I've got to study to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly abiding the word and truth. I've got to get into the word. I've got to know. And then when I get it in me, then when I'm in the middle of that struggle, the Holy Spirit says, remember that verse that says, my God shall supply all your needs according to your riches and glory. Oh, yeah, i got this. Woo! And you take off and you go because the Holy Spirit was right there to give it back to you. But it's because you put it in there. Romans chapter 4, verse 7 and 8 says this. I'm, I'm going to give you just a few. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Woo! I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a benefit blessing right there. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 1, uh, starting in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations. So even in my struggles and my trials and my tribulations, the Word tells me that i got a benefit. I've got the Comforter. Do you know who the Comforter is? The Holy Spirit. I have the Comforter. It didn't say my situation would always be rosy. It didn't say that everything would always be okay. But I would always be comforted in that. And this is what he says here. He's the God of mercies and he's the God of all comfort. Who comforts us in our tribulation. That we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. See, this is, this is God likes us to pay it forward. 
You know, that, that's kind of a big thing now that happens, you know. You go to, you go to a Christian chicken, and, and you're, 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 you're in the drive-thru, and, and you get up there, and, and they go, the people behind you, the people in front of you paid for your meal too. Well, you know, what, they, what should be your reaction is, well, how about the guy behind me? How about if I pay for his? Now, we, you know, how often do we do that? You know? But the object is to pay it forward, you know. Of course, the guy in front of me had to pay for me. I look in the back, and I got six kids, you know, and I got to pay for it. I'm like, hmm, you know. <laughs> I would just paid for my own, been out of here. We'd have been good, okay? No. <laughs> then I would have missed out on other blessings, okay? It's not about that. It's about the attitude that I do it with, okay? But he wants to be a comfort to me in my tribulations so that I might be able to help someone else access their benefit of having comfort by being a comfort for them. Wow. See, sometimes I get caught up in my own stuff. I, I ain't thinking about nobody else and what they're dealing with. I'm trying to deal with me. And God says, I want you to forget about that because I got you, so you go help somebody else. And you'll find that your stuff will just whoop. He said, with, with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. He says, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ Jesus. Our consolation, our, 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 our encouragement, our, we get our build up. Not in my circumstance of what I have and don't have. Listen, I know people that are millionaires that are so lonely and depressed and ready to blow their brains out because they have had it. And they've got all the money they need. That don't do nothing. Money can't make you happy. Money is just a revealer. You've heard Pastor Brian say that. It's just a revealer. It's just a revealer. It just, it just, it will bring out the good, but it will also bring out the evil. We see that every day. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 in verse 8 says this. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. That you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Anything that God calls you to, He will supply the need to do it. That's a benefit. He's God of all grace. I said this a while ago, Philippians 4.19, And my God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. Not all your wants, but all your needs. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 16 says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. And when His glory is revealed, you may be also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. Well, it just don't sound right, does it? He says, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or a busybody. I always thought that was cool that God put busybody in there because there's a lot of busybodies, aren't there? And he put that up there with a murderer and a thief and an evildoer. People that don't mind their own business. How about that? And, 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 and he says, in being in other people's matters, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. So there are sufferings that are my fault, but then there are sufferings because of the cause of Christ. And so we've got to distinguish which ones. If, if my sufferings is because I, I did something stupid or I did something evil or I put myself out there and did something that was dumb, then I can't expect to suffer. I can't blame the devil, and, and I'm going to miss out. But if I'm suffering because, listen, I've decided that I'm going to stand on my faith and I'm going to let people know of my faith in Christ and it causes you suffering, you're in good company because you're blessed and highly favored. Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. That, 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 that favor can be described as 
a tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord on his life. That's what that is. Those who are in favor of God know that God is with them and nothing can happen to them apart from his good purpose. If we would ever learn that one. Because I think everything's against me when it doesn't go my way. And that's not what the benefit says. What's the benefit say? Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good. Didn't say it felt good. Didn't say it was good. It said it was for my good. All things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. And so when I get that and understand that benefit, then nothing is going to move me or shake me when it, when it don't line up the way I want it to line up. His grace will always be sufficient. More than enough. Lastly, 2 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to pass it on forward to teach others also. See, everything we're doing, it may help me get my benefits, but it's also to help those that are around me see the benefits. I want people to see the benefits in me so they can know what they have access to also. And I want to be able to teach them. And I want you to be able to teach them. And so this is what it's all about. So how do I know if I'm blessed and highly favored? Well, if you're born again, you have Zoe life, you are blessed and highly favored favored. Let's stand together. Doesn't mean that everybody has to start saying that. How you doing? I'm blessed, highly favored. Ooh, gotta remember that. No, you may not have to say that. It doesn't matter if you say it or you don't say it. You is. You are blessed and highly favored. So when you go out of here tonight, go out of here not with a cockiness, but go out of here with a confidence. Go out of here with a confidence. You don't have you 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 look, look, you're not a porber. You, you're not you're not you're not oh woe is me. No, 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 no. Stand up, put your shoulders back, walk out there with confidence because you are blessed and you're highly favored of God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. Father, your word, as we already said, will not return void, but it will accomplish what has been sent forth to do tonight. And so, Father, I, I know that it has done that. And God, I know that our faith has been increased tonight. If we have allowed that word into us, that, Father, we will not be the same as we came. Father, we'll be changed in Jesus' name. We'll walk with a new walk of confidence. And our confidence is not in us, our confidence in you. And you are the one who is the benefit giver. And so, Father, let us say with everything that we have, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, I will not, I will not forget all your benefits. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We love you guys. Be at your place Sunday where you're supposed to be. Have a blessed rest of this week. We love you.